Welcome everyone to Ratioed. My name is Harrison Faulkner. Now, what do you do if you're Justin Trudeau and journalists that you haven't paid off write critical articles of you and your government exposing you for the authoritarians you are? Well, it's quite simple, actually. You deploy the pet propagandist over at Press Progress to discredit and fact check that reporting. Also on the show this week, the woke rewrite of Canadian history continues as Alexander Graham Bell, yes, the inventor of the telephone, is now being canceled by the federal government. And it's definitely not because he was a successful white European male from the 19th century. That is definitely not the reason why he's being canceled. And we wrap up the show this week, as we always do, with the Ratio of the Week Award. This week it is going to everyone's favorite transportation minister, Omar Al-Gabra. What is with this government and their attempts to try and convince us that they all of a sudden love Canadian truckers? It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, if you like Ratio and you like what we're doing over at True North, let us know by giving this video a like and sharing it. That's the best way you can help us all out. All right, let's get into it. Well, Press Progress is back at it again this week in a desperate attempt to try and clean up the crumbling narrative surrounding Justin Trudeau's unscientific and unconstitutional mandate on Canadian travelers. Press Progress fact-checked Rupa Subramania's bombshell reporting in Common Sense, the Barry Weiss substack. Rupa Subramania's bombshell reporting in Common Sense two weeks ago has been widely circulated and shared around the Canadian media ecosystem. The reporting surrounds publicly available court documents from the ongoing court challenge of Justin Trudeau's travel mandate. But two key takeaways have Canadians up in arms. The first and most explosive being that the secretive government task force given the job of imposing the mandate on Canadians had no scientific or medical justification for imposing these mandates. The second being that not a single person on this government task force had any medical or scientific background or education. They were simply nameless, faceless, pen-pushing bureaucrats. What a surprise there. So the Press Progress headline is laughable. Right-wing sources are spreading misinformation about a court battle over Canada's vaccine mandates. Ah, misinformation, there it is again. Useful tool that is, isn't it, for the left? Once you scroll past the first few paragraphs of drivel, you get to the press progress fact check. Now, clearly Justin Trudeau couldn't find a Reuters fact check, he couldn't find an AP fact check, so he had to go to his little buddies over at Press Progress. Now, again, if Press Progress fact checks something I wrote, that'd be like a great badge of honor. That'd be like you know when it's really true, when Press Progress tells you that it's misleading. Well, that's what happened to Rupa's article in Press Progress. They label it in big text misleading, and they write... Supermania's claim that court documents reveal Transport Canada's vaccine mandate policy had no scientific basis is misleading and contradicted by her own source documents. While the original court documents that Supermania cites are authentic, her blog leaves out key details, uses out-of-context quotes, and contains factual inaccuracies. Taken together, these present misleading impressions of Transport Canada's testimony and evidence. The Press Progress fact check highlights what they consider to be several misleading claims in the reporting. Now, we want to go through and highlight some of them to show you how ridiculous this fact check is. We'll take the first one, which they take issue with the idea that the mandate had no scientific reporting. The reason they say that it's misleading is because Rupa apparently didn't include an excerpt from the Attorney General of Canada, a liberal Attorney General, David Lametti, who sits in Justin Trudeau's cabinet. Yes, because she didn't highlight what David Lametti thinks about this misleading claim, the reporting itself is misleading. See how that kind of works there? The second misleading claim that they take issue with is the idea that the COVID recovery panel, the secretive government panel, is not actually secretive and they're actually easy to find. Don't try and look up who's on that panel though, because you won't find them. But they say still, because the COVID panel is referenced in a sub page on the Transport Canada website, that's all of a sudden not secretive. That's all of a sudden transparent. Yeah, call us back when you tell us who's on that panel. That's transparency. Nice try with that one, Press Progress. The third misleading claim that Press Progress has found with the Common Sense reporting is the idea that no one in the COVID recovery panel, the secretive COVID recovery panel, has any formal epidemiological or scientific education. And they believe that actually that's false because one person in the COVID recovery panel has had what, what they call Senior Experience at Public Health Agency of Canada. That is not formal epidemiological or scientific education. Senior level experience at a public health bureaucratic agency is not formal epidemiological experience. Just because you're a nameless, faceless, pen-pushing bureaucrat doesn't mean you know what you're doing when it comes to epidemiology. 
You know, I really hope Luke LeBron over at Press Progress gets a raise for this reaching here because he's really helping Justin Trudeau out. He's really reaching, trying to discredit this clearly devastating reporting for the government. And speaking of Luke LeBron, actually, Luke LeBron went on a podcast after writing this ridiculous fact check talking about what he believes journalism is all about and how he believes journalism is holding power accountable. Remember this, Luke? Journalism in a democratic society, you know, I see journalism as performing a fundamentally democratic uh, function. Um, some people would probably, you know, I, I think there are there's the attitude that, you know, journalists should inform in a very dispassionate and, you know, neutral way as we've been talking. Uh, but, you know, like the, just the idea of, you know, journalism as the fourth estate, um, like, you know, it, the implied in that is that you are part of the system of checks and balances uh, that holds power accountable. So little Luke LeBron, you're part of the system of checks and balances, eh? You're part of the system of holding truth to power? Does that include fact checking critical reporting of the government? That was an excellent fact checking job, Luke. Great job, buddy. So you guys have all heard of that evil racist bigot Alexander Graham Bell, right? We were all taught about him in schools. He happened to invent the telephone, but you know, most of us know him now as some evil racist bigot. And, and frankly, uh, thank goodness, because the federal government has listened to us. They are now investigating Alexander Graham Bell for posthumous honors due to his controversial beliefs. According to Blacklock's reporter, the Historic Sites and Monuments Board are now investigating Alexander Graham Bell for what they consider to be views, actions, and activities condemned by today's society. Now, this Historic Sites and Monuments Board are also looking to cancel 24 historic Canadian military forts for what they consider to be colonial assumptions. Colonial assumptions from old British forts on Canadian soil. I wonder what could be colonial about that. I mean, obviously, it's colonial. Colonial assumptions? These were British forts. British forts that played an integral role in building the country and the freedom that we all enjoy today. But of course, you gotta tear that down because it's old, it's British, and it's white. It must go. We must rid it from Canadian society. We need to get rid of anything that leads to the real story of this country because that way we can rewrite this history. That's really what's been going on too. The woke radical left have been on an absolute tear recently, rewriting Canada's history, toppling Canadian statues of John A. Macdonald, Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, Egerton Ryerson, and the list goes on. Not only that, Kingston, Ontario recently decided that the John A. Macdonald statue that they voted to tear out of the ground and rip off its pedestal, well, it's not going to be coming back to his gravesite. They're just going to vanish it from Canadian society. What a way to rewrite our history. As long as you get rid of any artifact that actually tells the story of Canada, then you can rewrite it in your own terms. Look out for when they tell us that Canada was actually created by a bunch of woke radical activists preaching for abortion rights and open immigration. But like we do on Ratioed, we wanted to give these woke radical idiots the benefit of the doubt. So what we did was we did a little bit of digging on Alexander Graham Bell's legacy, not wanting to make sure that we would gloss over some evil, awful, racist, bigoted actions by Mr. Alexander Graham Bell. And sure enough, we did find some of these horrible views that are out of touch with society. And I want to go through some of these views. Now, this is a trigger warning for all of you listening because the last thing we'd want to do on Ratio is offend you listening. That's the last thing we want to do. So this is your trigger warning before we go into some of Alexander Graham Bell's horrible, horrible views. These views include the idea that Alexander Graham Bell opposed marriage between deaf couples. He also opposed sign language and encouraged the deaf to assimilate by reading lips. Both Bell's mother and wife were hearing impaired. Oh my God, that's just terrible. I mean, sure, he invented the telephone, but he also thought deaf people should learn to read lips. Quick, cancel this man before anyone thinks a white man from the 19th century can be a force for good. Quickly, cancel him. I mean, surely it has to be those horrendous views on deaf people, especially if the government can't even answer the basic question of what views he held that are not in line with today's society. And I, 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 would, I would agree, you know, the idea that we should teach deaf people to learn to read lips, horrible, horrendous. You know, thank God, Canada has a prime minister so in touch with today's views and society's acceptable opinions. Like the idea that you can dress up in blackface, or the idea that you can dress up in brownface, or the idea that you can dress up in both blackface and brownface so many times you've lost count. I am wary of, of uh, being definitive about this because the uh, recent pictures that came out, I had not remembered. Uh, and I think the question is, uh, how can you not remember that 
The fact is, I, I, uh, I didn't understand how hurtful this is to people who live with discrimination every single day. Thank God we have a prime minister that is so in tune with today's society. Well, because we're True North, we deliver you the news and we let you comment back to us your thoughts. So I wanna go through some of your comments on Twitter from this article. And this first one is pretty much straight on the nose. In George Orwell's 1984, he wrote that every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered, history has stopped. This person commented, I was just at the Alexander Graham Bell Museum with my kids. It was amazing and fascinating, and at no point did I think, yep, this needs to go. Too controversial for me. In fact, I left thinking that Bell was more amazing than I realized. Ugh, I hate the liberals' ideas. Don't we all? Or how about this one to wrap us up? Controversial views? Let me tell you about this politician that avoided serving during World War II, that toured around the Soviet Union, and was good friends with Mao and Castro. Yeah, what was that guy's name again? Anyway, let's cut to the chase here. This is a concerted effort to rewrite and erase Canadian history. They want to rewrite it in their image. They want to tear down monuments of Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria, Johnny Macdonald, Egerton Ryerson, and whoever else. A conservative politician with a backbone would pledge to rebuild these statues, rebuild these monuments, and repeal these wild attempts at rewriting our history. If you destroy and tear down any semblance of a true story of this country, you can rewrite it in whatever image you want. And I shudder at the idea of Justin Trudeau rewriting our Canada. It wasn't just Christopher Freeland who pretended to love truckers last week, it was also Canada's Transportation Minister, Omar Agabra. What's the deal with Canada's government trying to pretend as though they love truckers? It, it's ridiculous, like they want to be truckers all of a sudden. Did you see that, Ricky? Awesome, buddy. Did you see that? Good Job. I put on a truck driving clinic today. <sighs> Thank you very much. What'd you think? How'd I do? Not good. Last week, Christy Freeland was touring a trucking facility talking about jobs and growth and how truckers are the backbone of our economy. Omar al Gabra did the exact same thing, but unlike Christian Freeland, who sometimes doesn't get ratioed in all of her tweets, Omar al Gabra, who gets ratioed every single tweet he puts out, I, I'm not joking, I check out his Twitter, it's brutal, it's kind of sad actually, not a single tweet he writes actually has a positive like to comment ratio. Omar al Gabra wanted to thank Canada's truckers for doing such an important job in our supply chain. So I put together a little slideshow with a thank you message of him shaking hands with truckers. Now, the tweet has 653 comments to 73 likes. And not only that, this guy gets ratioed in French too. All the Canadian government officials, they write the exact same tweet in French and English. He gets ratioed in French, which is frankly something I haven't seen before. He's only, the only government official I've seen get ratioed in both French and English. That's worthy of perhaps the ratio of the year award. Well, Omar al Gabber was so thankful of Canada's truckers. He wrote on Twitter, truckers keep our supply chain strong and our economy rolling. I had the chance to visit some of them in the last few months and thank them for their important role in our transportation minister. Kind of just in between when I canceled truckers, imposed a vaccine, made it on them, and froze their bank accounts. Just in between that, I've been, th I've been thanking them and shaking their hands. Unbelievable. This guy is such an idiot, such a doofus. I almost feel bad. Who's putting up these liberal government officials to do these trucker appreciation posts? I missed it. Was last week trucker appreciation week or something? I missed that memo. Hats off to you guys for putting quite the roast on Omar for this ridiculous tweet. Like this one here. Did you talk to any of the ones whose livelihoods you destroyed? And this person just calls out the BS that's going on right now. Something's up. First Freeland and now you in less than a week sucking up to the very group the government demonized a few short months ago? I smell an election. They're not likely to have forgotten how your government treated them. I sure haven't. <laughs> Remember that? How ridiculous that was? They couldn't even get tow trucks to move these trucks. Even the tow truck drivers hated the government. And who put the government up to these weird trucker appreciation week tweets? Cringe. Just absolutely cringe. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.